براتاني لغيتو لاتيميني براتاني قصة ويواميني براتاني تاريخ يميني براتاني لغة لاتيميني براتاني آدا يميني يوتي كركاب إيو فيلوا ماي براوا Learn about the history of the people of Mini, learn about the language of Mini, and learn about the culture of the people of Mini. All on the app of My Brother. 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 سلام على أهل بنادر مجد في العلا نسب طاهر سلام على أهل بنادر مجد في العلا نسب طاهر رجالاتنا جند ساهر سواحلنا كنز ظاهر سلام الله سلام الله سلام على أهل بنادر حمر وبر وهم السند مرانك لإخوانها مدد حمر وبرا وهم السند مرانك لإخوانها مدد سلام الله سلام الله سلام على أهل بنادر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode of Banadir Factor Today we're with the regulars of Banadir Factor Abdul Wahab and Abu Bakr Muhammad. Abu Bakr is his debut today, but he's one of the founders of Banadi Factor. He's one of my closest friends. He's been with me from the start of this project. He's one that gave us this idea and he was always there for us and in all our projects. He was mainly the cameraman, you probably know him by his voice, but he's here now. So welcome to Banadi Factor, Abu Bakr. Uh, today we'll be talking about this famous collection. It's called um, Servants of Sharia. Qadim al-Sharia So this is a collection of court cases in Barawa between 1893 to 1900 and it's over like a thousand um, court cases, civil register um, but the court cases, the Sharia courts in Barawa they were there for centuries isn't it? for hundreds of years but this was this was thanks to Alessandro Vianello and Mohammed Qasim they managed to collate all these court cases and this normal court cases that involved like buying a house, um, trading, divorces, divorces, um, um, civil matters. Money. Yeah, just civil matters. Yeah. But it's interesting because yeah, it's all sorts of things. If you're from Barawa, you got like a typical Barawa surname, Maike or Laten. All you have to do is go back to the index here eh, and just look for your name or your, your surname, and you'll find a court case from something like your great grandpa. You know, they got the case number as well. They got court case, case number. It's well. the very thing. But well, let's begin now. Anyway, so how do you want to start? Telling us anything interesting, what you found about this book? Yeah, uh, I found here my grandfather's, uh, the, like uh, uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Faqih Tahir Al Amawi, like uh, uh, Sheikh Wali bin Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Faqih Tahir Al Amawi. Uh, this shows like our gra grand grandfathers, mm. they were committed to. Uh, to produce justice on, on East Africa. So Barawa uh, was the only city I think, as a, what I saw in these books, just my view could be wrong, uh, was the only place that all East Africans used to come to, uh, to get their right. Mm -hmm. So you can find some people here or some community from Dirindaba, some from North Somalia, Somaliland, you can find some people or some cases from like at Bajuri that time Argentina at that time yeah. so all the way they came to Barawa uh, to get their right from the court of the Barawa yeah. this is like we appreciate for our great grandfathers to leave us this legacy uh, the other thing is uh, what I'm surprised for this book uh, uh, Abdurrahman already you thank to Alessandra uh, the other thing uh, I, I got in this book is like commitment of our great great fathers. The what they did is like trust all the so the, at that time the, uh, the transport, uh, transportation was hard to come to Barawa. Uh, 
uh, normally it take like seven days or mm -hmm. by boat mm -hmm. or by camel maybe more than a month or two months to come all the way to Marawa. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, w when we we got this information, this uh, encourage us to leave for our next generation uh, uh, to take part. So our grandfather leave us, uh, left us for this to not to just read mm -hmm. to put some uh, to put some information to leave for another generation come there to you so to continue our legacy so now uh, let's see Abu Bakr we're gonna say for his grandfather here <laughs> um, one thing that I always heard in my family was um, my great great granddad was a Khadi of Barao for a very very long time personally you know I thought it was something I was a lie until I got this book and I see his name right there, Muhammad bin Haji bin Maya Umar al Qahtani, and he was the longest serving Khadi. Mm. Uh, so it was something that, you know, filled me with great pride. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. I also saw someone that was uh, related to my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, Sheikh Wali bin Mu'alim Sadiq, Mu'alim Umar. So it's, uh, it's a very, very so good thing. Khadis, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, well, one thing that I really, really liked about this book is the transparency. You know, it talked about the, the, the justice, the justice in detail. Who was the witness? It mentioned their names. What was the problem? Mm. And what was the solution? Mm. You know, and you can see just like Abdul have mentioned, people were coming from all over Somalia. Be it back I there. Saw, I saw this case of a man from Is Isaq clan in Somalia. Yeah, the Howard Awal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Howard Awal. Yeah, Someone yeah. owed him money, and he came here to to settle this dispute. Yeah, mm. and it was, it's something that's very, very interesting. You know, people were coming from all the way from Ahoy, mm. Barber, um, Luch, Jilip, so on and so forth. Mm. It's and in that's each case, different. what you see is the case the number, what actually happened, mm -hmm. and who witnessed, who was the Qadi at that time of that case. So this case here, like Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Faqir Tahir, and then who administrated, who was the administrator of this case, and on, obviously on the left side, in here, Arabic, we yeah. see the Arabic manuscript. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the case numbers, that these are like official case numbers, mm -hmm. and they were all collected by, I think Abu Musa'ad after the war, he, he's the one that collected all of them. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you, Lassad, like from, from a general point of view, yeah, there's court, civil court, it's all accessible online. But why is it so important for us to like this book, right? What does it mean to us? At the end of the day, it's just a civil register. Any country, every country had one. But for our, for our point of view, why do we have like why do we have this book and why is it so important to us to know? I mean, it we see it in the in you know Britain. It's something of envy. You know, people can go through family records, mm. who got married to who, who got divorced to, and they have it in their libraries. Um, you know, our families have been keeping up this tradition, be it in. Um, Barawa be in Mukhdisha for a very very long time mm. and it's very very important that these deals are collated in books where people if they are going to look to find out more about their history can look at these civil matters mm. and find out more about their people and it's very very important that we get to see these things mm. and, it's living, and, it, and another thing is that you actually show the dynamics of the sea at that time what, what was their social norms? What were they facing? The challenges they had at that time, like mm. the 18, 1800s to 1900. And it shows the civilizational background. These people had Qadis, they had, they had like a, um, a just court where you can get your justice and everything. There was a colored and bend, there's like a hierarchy, you know, mm, there's, a, exactly. there's a system in place. There's a yeah. system in place. Mm. Yeah. And then also, um, they had similar. I'm, I noticed servants of the Sharia had one similar in Mokdisho as well, Chair yeah. Mu'alim Mukarram. Yep. And they had one in Mark as well. Yep. So this is what builds us as Banadir people. Country, we had yeah. the sim similarities. Yeah. Anyway, um, another thing we we'll have beginning of the book and in introduction, you showed us the map of Barawa. Mm. And then I want I want I want you to show us this map and tell us about it because it's something interesting. It shows you the actual cities and the yeah. towns, isn't it? The so that's the map of Barawa. It's on Barawa. And it's all key. Yeah, Abraham, mm. uh, you can see from here, uh, Barawa had six gates. Uh, like um, uh, and gate is like no, uh, walls around it, Mirango mm -hmm. in Liloa. So and surrounded by wall. There's like uh, at that time the old ancient cities was surrounded by wall by wall. Mm -hmm. So so this choice uh, Biruni and Pai uh, 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 like uh, Pai they had gate as well. They call uh, gate number seven in the map you can see in the map and Biruni 
So Biruni, they got gate number 10 and gate number 4. Even the Biruni was surrounded by it it's on the wall as well. Mm -hmm. Biruni, they had, they had gate. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the corner on the G, you can see they call Biladur Rahma or Al Bamba. Mm -hmm. So in Biladur Rahma, uh, uh, in the corner of Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Nuraini. Yeah, so Bilad Rahma is all the way down here. Oh, so down there. So there's a gate for Bilad Rahma then. So Bilad Rahma is there. No, but what he meant was they had on separate gate. This gate only takes you to Bilad Rahma. Okay. Yeah, this gate takes Bilad Rahma. So, and you see here, so on this map, uh, on the corner of the, look, Baghdad is here where the Baghdad nine, is. Yeah. Yeah. Get, get, get number nine is Sheikh Hawi, Sheikh Haji Weso, Al Barawi. So, so this choice the between the you know the the the, the old mini mm -hmm. is like from Pai and Biruni. You can that's see. It. The, the so basically, book. the oldest town in Barawi was yeah. Pai and, and Biruni. And Biruni, that's, that's all. Yeah. So you can see here. So uh, I can see where the mosquito mis Ajima. Mm -hmm. See, here. so. Uh, and uh, the, the another view as well on, on this map is shows like as a as a culture as Islamic culture or Thaqafat Islamia uh, when the Masjid of Jima must be in the center of the city mm -hmm. and that's the same thing in so Hawaii and so Asia. must be in the center of the city, city okay yeah. then Barawa it shows there was city before mm -hmm. so but now if you see Barawa Masjid Jima Masjid Jama Al Kabir the corner of the sea, there's no another their house. Also, but you were saying before the water, there was a city here. There was well. a city until Chilani. Yeah, so they even before, say that, like, you know, yeah. if you go to the sea, but the coast, yeah. underneath, there's still like old and I, I saw myself olden. some houses underneath, but they're coming by the yeah, sea. Now, yeah. by sea. So, mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, this shows the Brawa, this the Brawa now we see like, maybe, maybe fifth of it's gone now, it's gone, it's Possibly, covered by, yeah, yeah. by sea. So this Masjid al Jam al Kabir now uh, is the oldest masjid in Barawa mm -hmm. uh, for Jam al Kabir. Mm -hmm. uh, the second uh, for the, for the Jam, but there's another masjid called Abu Bakr Sadiqi. Mm -hmm. Here, you see here this uh, you, you see in Pai number two. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, this is the way we put alleyway. If you remember on our Pai welfare management, mm -hmm. uh, this alleyway all takes you to Masjid Abu Bakr. Masjid Abu Bakr is the oldest masjid. Okay, Abu Bakr. The oldest yeah. masjid in Barawa. Yeah. So the the second one we call Sheikh Abdul Qadiri. On the top of the corner, if you see gate number seven or uh, or gate number eight. Mm -hmm. So I've got another map here. It's from yeah. the mosques as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. mosques. Yeah. So uh, this uh, even the, the some is uh, scholars came to Barawa like the. Uh, Chinese man, or oh, I forgot his name. Zin Ye. Yeah, Zin Ye. He came to Brawa, he said, I saw people light skin, so they had democracy. There's a people like, uh, the, we call Ama mm -hmm. in Arabic, Mushtama, mm -hmm. so, and ruler. So there's a seven, there's a some people responsible for the yeah seven elders seven th that seven uh, that's the thing though yeah so a lot of cities they had kings or sultan and yeah. um, barawa and Mokdisha, the yeah, council of elders well the council of the elders so mm -hmm. every tribe they had their own elder so so they used to discuss the future of barawa they used to discuss the security of barawa they right. used to they used to discuss who can bring his community to barawa who can sell who can take so even they had rules, so now uh, there was democracy mm -hmm. w and wasn't like monopoly. Like you can bring only tea, but no one can bring in Brawa. You can you can get some reference in that that book. Uh, there's a, like there was like democracy at that time of Brawa. We're talking about 500 years ago, 600. There were democracy in Brawa. Mm -hmm. They used to elect their own leader. Mm -hmm. They used to respect their leaders. Say, no, I'm not saying so. That what I wrote in that book. Mm -hmm. So this choice uh, is our pride. So our elders were like uh, people that were represented of us and that yeah. people that we elected yeah. ourselves. Yeah, yeah. I think because you, you know when you say democracy, yeah. people will get mistaken by what we see today, democracy. Mm -hmm. yeah. But because it's Sharia, yeah. what you meant by democracy is people had their own rights. The, their own rights. You're yeah. not oppressed. There's no between the between the Amir and the mm. uh, Mahmoud no corruption. So, so there was no corruption zero corruption mm. so you now like not not the democracy now we yeah, see yeah. now like you can 
you can't complain about the minister, you can't complain about the governor. Mm. At that time, you can't complain about the governor. You can't comp uh, so the uh, some uh, was like not far, like we can say, 50, 60 years ago. One of our Qadi, mm -hmm. uh, uh, his name is uh, Muhammad Sheikh. He lost his front teeth, so he couldn't make khutbah when he pronounced in Arabic. He couldn't pronounce proper. So the community they say, "Oh Qadi, oh Khatib." So we, we don't understand what you're saying. So in in khutbah, so we, we have to we wanna we uh, we wanna hear what you're saying. So we we, know, we don't know what you're saying. So please, so step down. Okay. So in in that party. So what he did, he went to at that time he came to Mogadishu. He saw out he, he thinks it's still the community complaining. He can't do so he stepped down. His his. Uh, his mm. nephew came to to be a khatib uh, yes. Fakitair. Fakitair. so this choice that our our khatibis or our elders our elders they were happy to accept uh, mm. you know criticism the voice from the community so yeah. Yeah. Okay, you know, you know how have mentioned the masjid masjid al juma yeah. do, would you say they had the same thing in Mogadishu in Hamr yeah so in Mogadishu in Hamr in in right in the center of the city mm. um, we've got Jama al I think you showed me that your aunt lives near there. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a Friday mosque right in the center. Um, Shingani, likewise, they've got Jama um, and Shingani. I think on Marka, though, it's, it's, it seems uh, slightly different. Um, even though it's meant to be in the center of the city, it seems like that's on the edge of the city. And it could be plausible what Abdul Hab was saying that a lot of Marka might be buried underneath mm. the sea. Hmm. Because it's it's right at the edge of the sea. Um, they got a market in the middle of the sea, though. Hmm? They have a market in the middle of the sea. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The, uh, the other thing is, you know, uh, in Brava, mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's like they got some nomes. So in Brava, like Marka and Mogadishu, the same. Like in they they share some nomes, but the mm -hmm. Brava people they share nomes with other Swahili. Yeah, like Mombasa. Uh, Mombasa up to you know, Zanzibar. Zanzibar. No, yeah. Mombasa, Zanzibar, they also have Masjid Juma as well. Yeah, and it, it shows you that the civilizations back in the days, yeah. even um, Constantinople, mm -hmm. but the sea is how, it, how it's shaped up. They have mm -hmm. the, ma the main masjid in the middle, middle. Mm -hmm. then they build the houses around it, then mm -hmm. they have the markets, and they stumble today. That's what we see, and this shows even in Barawa. I mentioned this in the previous video, mm -hmm. but it's, yeah. it's amazing. And what's the current? Because you don't you don't research on the masajid in Barawa mm -hmm. for a small visit vicinity. How, how much? Masajid I mean, are there? Barawa's only got a population somewhere between thirty to fifty thousand, mm -hmm. and it's got well over forty eight mosques. For forty eight is how much I've counted, but there are you know um, mosques in which I was not able to find. So there's over forty eight masjids in Barawa. Um, in regards to the Tuxis. This is something that Barawa is quite famous for. I think it's got close to 300 duxis. Wow. For a small, for a small for town. very, very small town. But you know, we got uh, in Masjid, I have some record uh, from, I think, Ustad Muhammad Abu Bakr, uh, from Ustad Muhammad Noor. Mm -hmm. He was saying we got in Barawa Masjid of 100. Over 100? Yeah, mm -hmm. over 100. So. Is there like any case that you got came across that fascinated you guys, or like once, any, any interesting case you came across? On these books, I'm, I'm, I'm upon reading it. Um, one of the things that I find quite interesting in this book is, you know, it's it's the, the amount of rights women had, um, the rights to property. You know, this is a period in which in Europe, that women were being thrown off cliffs to check if they're witches. You know, they had a right to property, right to representation. You know, had many many different rights, and they were able to take their husbands to court if they didn't pay their mahr or their the dowry money and money sorry you know or they weren't paying for the upkeep and you'll see in many cases you know being listed in here you know i saw over so there's cases um <clears throat> where um the money is still owed after the husband's death so the mahar money or the money is still owed after the wife's death um i saw cases in which they talk about so um even people being represented by someone um, if they were, didn't have the mental fac faculties to be able to talk for themselves. You know, I saw people being... Um, so we're talking about disabled rights here, equality, everything, isn't it? Yeah, equality. Um, regardless of who you were, whether you're a fakir, you know, you still had the right to take someone to court. Cool. There's some loans I'll see from here, loans. You know, loans. So, um, you know, just 
That's a glossary page, isn't it? Yeah, it's a glossary page, and it talks about you know things that happened, you know, pledge for security. And I saw a few times on here, you know. Well, here, uh, so uh, this uh, is uh, uh, town areas. Yeah, Banjawa and Biruni. So I think you know this is just little areas, and I don't think these are um, pie as well. I don't think these are areas um, per se. You know, rather like the Hatimi area they mentioned in this book. It just might be just a little part of. Madrasani uh, here, with Abdurrahman's family or something. Yeah. So the yeah, Madrasani or the Hatimi area might be just no. a little area in Biruni, is it? No, uh, Hat. Uh, but, but you know they said Hatimi lived in Pai, but yeah. they wasn't limited to Pai, they had houses in Biruni. Because mm -hmm. yeah. Pai is more congested, Biruni is more spacious and big yeah. houses. Yeah, big houses it's like the Hollywood of... <laughs> <laughs> so, Rahman Masha, like, you can see some case about the sales, mm -hmm. uh, run away as well, some, you know. Well, let's, let's, let me like, let's read one case, just for example, how the structure was. So I'm going to read one case to you lot. Yeah. So this case, it was... um. The case number is um, 192, 192, number 169, paid as, is, a, is, um, is a loan, I think it's a money issue here. Mm -hmm. So is it on Thursday 26 to Hijjah 13, 12, Sharif Muhammad bin Sharif Khulatin Al-Mudir conferred, he's not my grandfather by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not, I don't carry that out. Conferred powers of attorney upon Sayyid Muhammad, uh, sorry Sayyid Ahmed bin Sharif Muhammad A. Darus Al-Nadiri. Delegating him to institute legal proceeding against Sufi bin Nur Amin al Shashi. So he shows that there was Shashis there in Barawa at that time, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But this will come for to get like, just this trade as well. Al Shashi, mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah. they still there today, Shashi. Um, I think yes. not in Barawa as well. Yeah, they are. Um, there's um, Sheikh Oasis' teacher in Khadriya um, mm -hmm. was a Shashi person, and I think his family is still there today. So, so Nur Amin al Sheikh al Shashi concerning the sum he owes Sharif Muhammad bin Sharif Hulatin for the amount of 220 silver Kirsh. So, Kirsh is a currency at that time of Barawa, right? Mm -hmm. Was it used in Mogadishu as well, this currency? Or? Um, I, I wouldn't know, I'll be honest with you, yeah. but no. I'd imagine it was, but I wouldn't know. I'll really, but the thing, mm -hmm. yeah, by the um, Sultan at that time. And to bring a lawsuit against all those persons who are in possession of Sufi bin Nur's property, producing evidence, asking for verdicts, and lawful, um, and for the fulfillment of the obligation. This power of attorney is valid and lawful, satisfying all required conditions and principles. And then that that shows what happened in the, the case, the case verdict. And then the witnesses is um Shawush Khalaf bin Khamis and Suleiman bin Nasir bin Hamad. So these were these were just Omani Sultan at that time. They're probably witnesses, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this case here was written by um Sheikh Nuren bin Muhammad bin Sabir Khadi of Barawa on the date indicated above. So the Khad at that time was probably Sheikh Nuren on this case here. And then these are the witnesses. So this is a typical case. Yeah, this me. shows as well there was the I think at that time there wasn't like law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are like a uh, free will. So mm. when you when like uh, when that for example the judge yeah uh, what he did or uh, right decision or wrong decision well, he got right to make appeal or to accept. Mm. So there's no like law enforcement. Mm. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So they, they, the, the that, there was three will. He will, he will based on his, on his own verdict and he will like hear both sides of the story and come with a decision in the end, isn't it? Yeah. So and there's no like there's no um, biasness or anything like favorism. Mm -hmm. It's just all very diverse here. But should we talk about do you want to talk about how the Italians when they came, how how things changed and what they did? Because I believe they um the they still allowed Barrow to continue their court cases, because, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know who wants to talk about that? Do you want to talk about that? Don't no, have you. Um, when take. the Italians came? Yeah, yeah, you take. I have, I have no idea. Um, uh, they, they, they still um, allowed the people to rule by them, but they wanted to have the overarching, you know, to, to supervise, to supervise them. So yeah. they, they, they saw them as their employees. Um, you know, it's something that continued up until when you were, were alive as a kid in Barab, were the Khadis still relevant? For civil disputes, yeah, mm. and in Mogadishu, you know, <coughs> they were still relevant up until the 1970s, when Siad Bari got rid of it. Yeah. You know, there was a certain um, there was a certain place in Hamburg when people used to go to to sort these civil disputes in which they had. Mm. You know, unlike um, Barawa, um, Mogadishu, there was a monopoly 
on um, who the Khadis uh, belonged to. Um, so it was just uh, one particular clan who who ruled over you know the mm -hmm. the, the Reflakhis in uh, Hamarwene. You know, mm -hmm. um, up until you know my mum was a kid, she remembers her granddad and her she remembers her dad uh, solving disputes between people from all various clans. Um, the art, number I did it even, mm. um, would come over to their house and uh, look for their haq, you know, and he would be sorting sort their disputes. Wow, so that's really interesting. interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. It shows how the thing, like, when the Italians came, they're colonizers at the end of the day, but they still, they saw a working system here in place mm -hmm. and they allowed it to continue. But one thing I noticed in this book I read about the colonial. Um, when the Italians came, mm -hmm. they began to regulate these um, cases. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they dealt with the major cases like murder mm -hmm. or war or anything. Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of cases like local cases, mm -hmm. they let the Khadis deal with it. They well, get, the big they, cases. The like big murder. cases, they dealt with it. Yeah. Murder, um, local cases. Civil let, disputes. Yeah. And then each case, they make sure they stamped it like they, it's official mm -hmm. and it's recorded. Mm -hmm. But and I noticed this like this is like a thing for what, what people what the colonization empire or regime did mm -hmm. to the Muslims to keep them a bit like regressed mm -hmm. to keep them on their toes like what they do is the first thing they do is to go for the ulama the qadis yeah chop chop um like clip their wings a little bit making sure that they are regulated mm -hmm. so they don't do anything that will transgress or that will cause rebellion mm -hmm. so like. The, so that's the first thing to do, make sure they regulate the religion. Mm. So you, you put things into perspective. Anyway, let's talk about, because um, you know there's a lot of Indian cases as well, there's um, yeah, foreigners there. Yeah, there's one particular Indian merchant called uh, Tariya Topan, who's a, who's a well-known merchant in uh, Barawa and Zanzibar. And he's got many cases, I can see over 40 cases just belonging to him. No way. Um, mm. Where it's selling a property, um, amongst other things. Do you want to talk about it? Mm. Yeah, no, yeah. I read about him. Yeah. He's a um, wealthy Indian merchant that was in Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. He met a lot of um, people. He stayed there. He wrote, people wrote about him as well. Mm -hmm. And he bought properties in Barawa. He used to build. Yeah, in Marka as well. He's got houses there. Yeah, he had houses yeah. in Marka as well. In Mokhdish as well. I don't know about Mokhdish, but he definitely had So houses. it does kind of make sense that he comes in his book. Like a lot of people, he probably buys and sells, isn't it? The yeah, and yeah. the houses that he built were really, really beautiful, really, really big. And some are still standing today. Yeah, some are still standing today. The Ratahara yeah. 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 house in Brawa. Mm. Where's the, where the Ratahara? Number four. That's no. be between Biruni and Pai, right? No, uh, yeah, now we call now uh, was like uh, at the time of Italian. The, this corner was the central bank at that time was a mm -hmm. bank mm -hmm. uh, before the you know regime 1969 that mm -hmm. came the regime so here was the bank and here is a mosquito we call Mr. Sarmadi in this corner and this building was the this building was built uh, was built by Topa okay so it's how it's still standing today isn't it yeah 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 still yeah I can show the photos I have as well so after when the colonies came, so that was the Italian. They used to, uh, you know, they called the, the house of residence. Of residence of the Italian, like a guest house. So they, they had one house here as well. We call it Casone. Mm -hmm. We call it Casone as well. It's a beautiful house as well. So and, and that's so another thing. Even uh, what, what I see from here, Brava, they have they have their own area. So they have like town gate, Jamia Mosque. Wa'ili's house, marketplace, house, yeah. yeah, Italian uh, uh, government house, Bilad Rahma, graveyard of Omar Bar Omar family, main graveyard, mosque of the Sheikh Abdul Qadir, village of Baghdad with mosque of the Sheikh Wais Al Qadri. Where's, uh, where's Moscow? Yeah? Where's Mosque Abdul Qadir? Sheikh Abdul Qadir is here, is in a, uh, one second, number eight. Sheikh Abdul Qadir is uh, in the north. That's an old, there is. That's number that's eight, I chopped that. Yeah. There's a grave site there, isn't yeah, it? Grave, the main grave. Mm. The main grave. Yeah, the main grave. So, mm. yeah. I found a case of, uh, of, you know, here it says, um, Praise to you, due to God, thereafter, on Tuesday, the 26th of Shawwal, 1317, Signal Durio, governor of Banadir, rented from Sharif Muhammad bin Sharif al Nadiri his whole house, which is well known and situated in the town of Barawa near the seashore. So, I believe this is the house you're talking about. Yeah, is this the house where the the Italian's residence was? Could that possibly be it? Yeah. 
the, the Italians uh, rented, they rented these houses. Yeah, yeah, they rented these houses, and it was um, so. It says to the southern side there was Haji bin Bana Ahmed Wali, mm. um, to the western side was Tariya Topin, and to the northern side was the land of Sharif Abrar bin Sharif Habib Makkah. Mm. Was do you reckon this was the house where this is in Pai, that, that house is in yeah, Pai, Pai, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it, do you reckon this is the house in which number four is on where they uh, the Taliban number four is number four, yeah, it's Taliban, yeah. yeah. So, do you reckon this is the house that they rented the governor? Mm -hmm. So, the governor, do you reckon that's where the Italian I think it is? Because if we look at this case right now, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a house situated in Barawa, and you mentioned Sharif Habib Mecca, mm -hmm. and then they, they said that it's in Pai area. So, if that's so that's in conjunction of that, then that means the house was in Pai, isn't it? Mm -hmm. was in Pai, yeah. But you know one thing I've noticed, like a lot of people say the Italians when they came, they built some houses. No, they but don't forget all these houses they rented it off. Now, the, now there's this narrative where people say these beautiful houses in Barra were built by the Italians. Italians but no. these houses were there before the before Italians came. Yeah. Yeah. So something that because there's a know, whole thing yeah. they're using it against us. If, if 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 you look at the doors there, you can see that they're clearly from Zanzibar or the Swahili coast. If you look at the architecture. A lot, yeah. It's mm. clearly not Italian architecture. Mm. You know, it doesn't look like it comes from Venice or. Yeah. You know, yeah, those sort of places. It's got its own unique architecture. Yeah. And this is something that clearly preceded um, the Italians coming. Mm. So um, the lease is for 18 months. They're starting from Dul, Dul Al Khada for a total rent of 180 silver khish, handed over in full to the, the renter. The leasee took possession of the rented house. The lease contract is valid, proven, and lawful. And the witnesses were Sharif Abrar bin Sharif Habib Makkah, Sheikh Al Balad Fakhi bin Haja Wisa, and this was written by Khadi Wali bin Abdurrahman bin Fakhi Tahir, in the presence of Khadi Muhammad bin Haji Maya Omar. Mm. So, you know, there's these cases, you know. It, uh, we can say the contract as well. That case. Tenancy agreement. Yeah, we can we can yeah. see the, the tenancy agreement in yeah. these contracts. And I, yeah. I believe they probably still are available somewhere in someone's library, in someone's house. Mm. <laughs> if it's not preserved, it's probably going to be thrown away soon. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they need to be preserved, that's the thing. Yeah. But this um this book is like a like a gem for us. Mm -hmm. um, we can sit here and talk about it every, for like it, it requires a lot of episodes to go through this properly, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, like we but we need to, we also all we need to, to do is um get one from Mogadishu. Um, I want, I'd like to see servants of Sharia of Mogadishu and because I'm pretty sure they have most. They, what do you think? Yeah. What do you think their cases would be based on? I wouldn't know, but I feel um, Mogadishu is a bit. Stuff <laughs> 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 Uh, so gonna stop me. Oh, we're gonna cause bad beef now, isn't it? <laughs> uh, what do you think? Is there anything you want to add? Uh, no. <laughs> no, that's not. Okay, right then. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope you lot subscribe. I hope you guys learn anything from this. We're gonna continue. We'll probably do another episode on this, but this book, I'll recommend you guys to buy if you wanna learn about your history, learn about the context, what happened back in the days. There's two volumes. It's on Amazon as well, or just. If you, if you know us personally, we can, I don't mind letting you look. Um, borrow it, you know, if you know us personally, I wouldn't. You know, I think, but there's going to be a big queue here, though. Well, yeah, <laughs> there's a few so of us who want to borrow it. I'm the one. Now. Just make sure, <laughs> and also make sure you um, check visit our website, benadirwiki.com. It has more, we talk about this book as well, it has so many other history, mm -hmm. history there, um, information about pretty much everything. It's so well structured and everything. And other than that, thank you very much and take care. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Okay.